everyone. Uh, thank you for your interest in working with us. Um, our goal today is to give you a little background about the Bush Foundation and then some more specifics about this position and the hiring process. Um, I'm Kim. I am the Talent Learning Evaluation Coordinator, and I'll be running logistics for today's video. I'm also a close partner to Stephanie and Joni in this hiring process, and um, also they are on call uh, with us today. And that Joni, Stephanie, if you want to introduce yourselves. Yeah, I can go first. Um, I'm Joni Chasich. I'm the Talent and Human Resources Manager uh, here at Bush. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Stephanie Andrews. I'm the Talent Learning and Evaluation Director here at the Bush Foundation. Thanks guys. And we have Joanna here, who is the hiring manager for this position. Um, Joanna, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey everyone, Joanna Ramirez here. I am the Program Operations Director at the Bush Foundation. Cool, thanks. I'll hand it off to Stephanie. Thanks, Kim. Um, we're going to start with where we started. So we think it's really important to start off with an introduction to the foundation itself, because even those of you who know a lot about the Bush Foundation sometimes don't know who the Bush is in the Bush Foundation. So we sometimes say that our Bush is not from beans or beers or the presidential family. The Bush in this Bush Foundation is Archie Bush. He's shown here with his wife, Edith, at their winter home in uh, Florida. Um, Archie was born in Granite Falls, Minnesota. Um, his asthma kept him from joining the family business of farming, so instead he went into bookkeeping. Um, he started work at a small firm that was then called Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, and over decades he helped grow that um, company into a global corporation that we know as 3M. We like to think about Post-its, really innovation being in our DNA. Um, he built wealth um, as 3M grew, and with that wealth, created the Bush Foundation in 1953. And since that time, the Bush Foundation has invested more than a billion dollars uh, in individuals and communities in this region. You may be wondering, so what about, what do you do with all of that? Um, we hopefully, again, some of the work is familiar to you. You can learn a lot more about it on our website. But what we do is we invest in great ideas and the people who power them. We work in Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and the 23 Native nations that share that geography. And the why of what we do it is to inspire and support creative problem solving. Important to emphasize there, it's within and across sectors. So really looking at how do we build connections? How do we figure out how to take the great ideas um, that are, that are um, among all the people and organizations in this region and think about how to knit them together to make our region better for everyone? We work through open grant making programs to support efforts to develop, test and spread and inspire, equip and connect people and ideas. Um, the open grant making prog programs is really key to this role because it means that we are in our major grant making programs saying to people, here's the program. If this fits you, please um, think about applying. That means we get a lot of applications and this job would be helping to manage a lot of that in and out um, of all the people who are looking at um, our work. A lot of this work, if you sum it all up, is about capacity building and leadership development in ecosystems and organizations and individuals. This next slide here is probably my favorite slide. Um, this is where we get to see the people who make up this thing we call the Bush Foundation. And so this is from our staff retreat um, this last month, so very recently. Um, currently, there are about 35 um, people when we're fully staffed. Um, and this group of people, um, it just makes me smile, just such a huge mix of background experience, um, people coming from the nonprofit sector, from consulting, from government, from law, the arts. Some of them have experience in, in um, foundations um, in other parts of their lives, but not all of them or even most of them. And so if you're thinking, I've never worked in a foundation before, I don't even know what a foundation is, totally fine. We really, really want to bring people in from across um, the region, across the communities to help us do this amazing work. Um, having that mix of perspectives on our staff is part of what um, makes us, I think, um, able to serve um, the very diverse communities in this region better 
And it's also a lot of fun to be with um, all these people. So um, thinking that I would love to hear from the folks on our call today a little bit about what did you do before you came to the Bush Foundation? And you might want to say how long you've been at the Bush Foundation too. Um, I will start off by saying I'm the, the old, is it a turtle? I don't know what the animal is. Anyway, I've been here a long time compared to what you'll hear from my colleagues here. Um, I've been here since 2013. Um, I... Um, didn't plan to, I had come from a long, um, long bit of experience in government um, in the budget office, working for three different governors, doing a lot of work, especially in education. I first came to the Bush Foundation to lead um, the teacher effectiveness initiative um, that the foundation was, was deeply involved in and one of its core initiatives, and then moved into this work in talent and HR and evaluation um, about five years after that. So I had the chance to do a ton of different amazing things at the Bush Foundation and um, to get a little bit of understanding about what it means to drive change in this place. That was what drove me in government. Um, and I certainly have some of that same, um, that same satisfaction from the work that I do here at Bush. Um, Joanna, let's hear about you. Great, thanks, Stephanie. Um... Well, I have worked in a variety of sectors. I started my career as a university researcher, um, working on racial disparities in different systems. And from there, went to nonprofit, still philanthropy, back to nonprofit. Most recently, I was at a national organization called College Possible, um, where I was the um, head of our executive directors, and I have been at the Bush Foundation now for six months. And I will kick it over to Kim. Thanks, Joanna. Um, hi, hi again. I um, am, again, the Talent Learning Evaluation Coordinator. This is uh, my fourth month in, I believe I starting to lose track a little bit. <laughs> um, before this, I was uh, working nonprofit, studied kind of nonprofit management at the University of Minnesota, um, and then was a finance operations kind of person for the Eastside Freedom Library in East St. Paul. Um, and then I came over to the foundation because. It was a really cool opportunity with an organization that I really, really respect and thinks I think does really great, awesome things um, and really awesome way of doing grant making. And so um, and I my position really helps to support the staff, um, developing the staff, helping them with their projects, also with their professional development and uh, having a little hand in a lot of different things here at the foundation and it's been really fun and I feel like I already get to do so many different things so yeah um I'll kick it off to Joni thanks thanks Kim um so I'm probably the newest of the group I started this past summer in June um I am like I said the talent HR manager here um prior to working at Bush Foundation I worked for a little over two years at the Department of Veterans Affairs as a loan specialist. And in that role, I assisted veterans from across the country uh, avoid foreclosure during COVID-19. Uh, very humbling work um, and hard work. Um, and prior to working at the VA, I spent seven years at McKnight Foundation. Um, and I had a role of HR generalist and also comp and benefits manager there. Um, and then prior to McKnight, I have some government experience as well working in HR recruitment uh, capacity uh, at USDA, um, Homeland Security, and Army Corps of Engineers, um, to name a few. So really enjoy working in both public and philanthropic mission-driven sectors where the focus is really on advancing the public good, and really happy to be part of the Bush and Talent HR team. Get off back to you, Joe. Okay, for value. Yeah, again. So um here are, this slide shows our operating values. Um you'll see them on our website and 
um, the job posting as well. They are to spread optimism, work beyond ourselves. Everybody matters, matters, steward well, and more good every year, aka Miggy. Our values help to guide the decisions we make every day at the foundation and are a big part of how we operate. We look for people who can embrace and demonstrate these values in both their work and with our staff. I'll kick it off to Joanna. Let me, let me jump in before you go there, Joanna, because I just want to add something that we haven't talked about yet and doesn't feel like it's like it's missing from our conversation that one of the values that we have is everybody matters. And and um, there's a lot of work that Joni and Kim and I do directly in our equity and anti-racism work that is really core to the foundation's work um, in how we operate internally. And Joanna and others, um, this role as well, um, the grant making staff, so much of what we are doing as well is really thinking about how do we apply an equity and an anti-racism lens um, to the work that we do. And as that um, work keeps equity at its core, it's not only the lens we put on in a specific question, it's the foundation and the ceiling and the, the wraparound of all of the work that we do. And so you see there in some of the, the language, we're actually working on updating um, this language to reflect more clearly what we're doing. It's just a lot of the, the, the foundation that we have in asking questions about uh, doing our work as well as we can. So really thinking about excellence and equity being um, part and parcel of the the foundation's um, way of approaching work. And again, it would be really core to this position. So we'll talk about that more when we get to the actual position. I just felt in all of our introduction to the Bush Foundation, we haven't talked about that yet. And you should know about that too. That's all. Thanks, Joanna. Throwing it back to you. Great. Well, next, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the team. It's a talented, committed group of individuals. And similar to this, the people on this call, we have um, some staff who have been with the foundation for many years and um, some staff like myself who are um, relatively new. And I will start with, um, and this position I would say is going to work and be connected to everyone on the team um, in the work that they do. So I'll start with uh, Nia, who is our program operations coordinator. And then we have Amanda, who's the grants administrator, who is relatively um, new as well. Um, we I'm going in a circle. <laughs> uh, Christy, who is a program operations officer who works primarily with the Bush Fellowship. Callie O'Hara, who uh, also program ops officer, works primarily with our community innovations grant making program. Amy Anderson, ops officer who works um, closely with our ecosystem grant making program, PRIs, memberships, and uh, our community-based partner program. Then we have Kevin Bruins, who is our IT strategy and solutions manager. And then there's a question mark <laughs> for this new role of program ops associates. And could that be you? Then we'll go to our next slide, just so you get an idea of the work and how um, it all intersects. So you have Dan, myself, who um, and this new role, who um, really cross all of these areas. Um, the ops officers helping with grant process and selection, Amanda overseeing our grants administration, and Kevin. Um, in the IT area. And then if you go to the next slide, our this is our program operations framework that we use. And it's, uh, as Stephanie said before, it's one of the ways that we embed equity in all of our work. And it's um, something that we use to really think about our programs and any projects um, do, do they advance equity? 
are they simple, supportive, strategic? And what are the things that we can do to, to make them um, more equitable, simple, supportive, and strategic? All right, next slide. Um, we're really looking for someone because the work that we do is so collaborative, someone who is collaborative and um, is a creative problem solver and um, is just excited about figuring out um, how to do things better, simpler, how to use technology to improve the way we do our work um, with really great technical skills and experience with Salesforce or some other type of complex database and who is committed to equity and also is a curious uh, person who likes to learn. And um, this person will be responsible for coordinating and, and executing on uh, technical and programmatic activities related to the day-to-day -day operations around our primary grant programs, provide backup in terms of grants administration and all the work that we do in our database system around um, administering grants. And, you know, we'll be a close partner with with Kevin, our IT strategy and solutions manager. We also have an internal working group that um, meets regularly just um, to talk about ways to improve the way we work with our Salesforce system, which we call BRAD, and that stands for Bush's Really Awesome Database. <laughs> so we also like to have fun, I guess is a good, um, uh, is an expression of, of that. And then of course, participate in cross foundation work, which we all do. Muted. On the next slide, um, I will highlight um, some of the key skills and experiences. So we are really looking, and, and these should, like you shouldn't see any of these and say, what? They should really connect with a lot of the stuff that Joanna was talking about. We're really looking for a competent end user, somebody who is familiar with working with a complex database such as Salesforce. We use um, Salesforce um, for a whole lot of things. We use it obviously for the customer relationship management stuff that is kind of core to what CRMs like Salesforce are all about. We also use it, it's our grant making platform. So we um, move a lot of things through that um, and have associated systems to do other pieces of it. We talk about that more in, in our later um, conversations if you moved along. Just want you to know that kind of understanding how database Databases like that work is a core um, experience uh, level that we'll be looking for as part of this uh, job. That means also project management training, really important understanding the concepts of project management. If you have certification or something in that, all the, all the better. Um, because we're so collaborative, that strong communication and your personal customer service skills, again, are really critical to doing this job well. Um, that might mean having some experience training or coaching um, to help people understand, again, how to take that, what, as we said, some of the ex excitement and enthusiasm about technology and translating it, persuading others, um, seeing the things that you see, helping them um, use the system so that we get the best um, out of it. Um, really looking for a process orientation, understanding how program design and implementation, how would you use tools and data to understand how to make those as effective and efficient as possible. Um, it also means being pretty able and comfortable at navigating ambiguity. This is, as we'll talk about a little bit more later, this is a new role. And so a lot of the work has been done in some other positions, trying to figure out what comes from what position and how do we build that? That'll be some of the early work that Joanna and her team will be doing even ahead of this, the person starting in this role. But you never figure that out completely till somebody's doing it. So there'll be a little bit of job creation and design as a, some of the first steps of this, which um, if you're probably the right person for the job, if that sounds really cool and exciting, if it really, really freaks you out to think there's no playbook, then probably this may not be the right role for you. I'll stop there. The rest of it, I think, is pretty um, self-explanatory. Lots of good stuff in this job. 
The next slide here is just, I'm gonna take a minute to talk about some of the details of it. They're in the posting, so um, you can see it there too, but the hourly rate is $39.80 for this. Um, expecting if there's a 40 hour work week, then that ends up being um, that $82,794. That may seem oddly specific. Um, so I wanna talk to you a little bit about what we mean when we say that is our salary. Um, we put a lot of thought and analysis into how we approach pay. And we really seek to embed the equity that we were talking about earlier into our approach to compensation. So that means that we use external industry benchmarks um, to figure out what um, would be competitive pay for the roles that we have. And once we decide on that number, that is the, the number that we pay people when they start. Um, we continue that throughout the life of someone's job at the foundation. We keep looking at benchmarks. We adjust when we need to. Um, anybody in, all the people who are in the same role, um, so in this case, all the associates, they are paid at the same rate. Um, there's a little bit of a difference for people who've been in a job a year or less versus a year or more. Um, this number that you see here is 95% of the benchmark. So everybody who starts, I think that right now would be Kim and Joanna and Joni, for example, they're all at 95% of the benchmark for their roles. After a year in the job, if things are all looking on track, then we go up to that 100% and people then we keep people all in the roles at the benchmark um, going forward. Again, the reason that we do that and the reason we're telling you specifically what it would, um, what that salary would be is because we don't want to embed pay inequities in our um, system, in our pay structure from the very beginning, which can happen if you say, we'll pay you in this range, people negotiate, people have different comfort levels in negotiation. And we also know that that actually lines up with people who have been well served by dominant culture systems and those who have not. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to embed those disparities in at the very beginning. We believe that what we're paying is generous and fair and appropriate for the role. And that is what you're going to get. We also know that the, when you are trying to land a new job and you are just meeting your supervisor for the first time, really the last thing you want to do is enter into a pay negotiation. So we hope that that feels good for you to know that that is what it would be. And it may mean that that is a great increase for you. We hope so. That's exciting. It may mean that that doesn't line up with your salary expectations. We want you to know um, today then that that is what it would be and, and you get to decide if that's something that still keeps the job interesting to you or not. We hope it does, um, but we want you to know where we're, where we're coming into that. Um, so all of that aside, obviously um, it matters a lot to us. So you got to hear a couple minutes of my, our philosophy on that. Um, our benefits as well here at the foundation are generous uh, medical dental, uh, great retirement program as well with match uh, for from the employer, um, vacation, sick, holiday, professional development allowances, all the things you might hope for. I'll say on the professional development side, we are a learning organization, um, really, really core to living out that more good every year operating value. And so we put a lot of um, attention to this and every person has an individual uh, professional development plan called the MIGI plan. Um, and we also put some money behind that. So really encourage, invite, almost require people to be sure of how they're thinking about how they're gonna um, put put some attention into to improving their skills so that they can have even more impact um, in the in the world. Um, and then finally, um, you may be wondering about how we're working right now. You can see that we're in different places, the four of us. Um, we are hybrid. Um, we have some great office space in downtown St. Paul. Um, and then we also um, support home office setup for everybody. People are required to be in the office um, one day a week. That's Wednesdays. We try to organize and kind of group all of our org-wide uh, work together on that one day. So we get the chance to come together and see each other at least once a day, um, once a week. And um, other than that Wednesday, people are free to do um, what they need to to get the work done as best they can and support their lives the other days of the week. We can talk more about that. If you have questions, send them in, but that just, I know that you would want to know um, what we are, how we are organized. Whew, that was a lot on that slide. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm going to turn it to Joni now to talk about timeline uh, for this job. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie. So I'm just, just, just going to walk through the hiring timeline. Um, so we are both excited and eager to find our next colleague for this new role. Right now, the application deadline is Monday, October 16th. Um, and we hope to have our semi-finalist interviews the week of November 13th, which will be uh, done via Zoom. Uh, we'll narrow down our candidate list to the finalists by hopefully the week of November 27th. 
uh, and we have a target start date of as soon as possible. So that really just depends on kind of where the candidates that we have at that point as well. Awesome. Thanks, Jenny. And thanks, all of you. So we're just going to jump into some frequently asked questions um, that we think you'll want to know or that we've heard before uh, off, asked often in the past. So I'm just going to start with asking Joanna. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of people probably are curious about what it's like to be a part of the team. So if you could kind of speak to that, that'd be awesome. Hi, thanks, Kim. Um, you know, it's, I, I think I just shared earlier, it's a mix um, of people who have been at the foundation for a while who are a great kind of resource and, and understand um, what we do and how we've done it um, in the past and uh, new people who are continuing to work with um, everyone to think about how do we continue to make things more equitable, simple, strategic, supportive um, for grantees, partners, fellows, um, and our staff? And so, um, you know, Stephanie said, this is um, a new role and, you know, we are really looking for someone who is excited about the idea of working with the team to continue to think about how to really maximize our data system in um, the work that we're doing. Um, we've been working in a new way for a couple of years and why this role is new um, is because where we are in our evolution is we have this Hypothesis. Um, I thought it was a research. I started as a researcher, but we really have this idea that um, we, if we have this key role with technical skills, um, who works, you know, across teams, they'll be able to really help us figure out how to continue to do our work um, better and um, more equitably and so that we can continue to have fun. <laughs> awesome, thanks. And if I could add a little something, because I kind of, I, I feel like in the past few months I've been here, I've had a lot of crossover with a lot of people on your team. And I just to say, like to say that um, everyone has been so helpful and um, really great about explaining processes, but also like, understanding you know people's capacity and understanding you know uh their level of understanding with uh the things that they're doing their team what they're you guys are would be doing and then like pulling people in they're really really great about that really helpful um and your team does fun things i think you guys went mini golfing or something for a team retreat and that's it's fun <laughs> um Thanks. Cool. Yeah, we are, you know, with this new way of working, although um, a lot of the team has been at the foundation for a while, we're a fairly new team. And of course, we have a fairly new leader. So it's really good timing in terms of bringing, you know, someone in um, because we're we're working on the, the team bonding and um, getting to know each other as humans um, because it's just important how i mean that's a part that could be like the program operations slogan how we do the work is as 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 important as the work that we're doing so cool um and stephanie uh you talked about the work environment a bit do you want to uh, one question is if someone can work remotely for this position we do hybrid but want to say a little bit more for this position specifically yeah good good question um we as we say i think in the posting you know we're a place-based foundation so when archie set this up um specifically are trying to improve 
um, help the communities and people in this region. So we require that all Bush Foundation staff have to live in the region that we serve. Um, again, that's Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and the 23 Native nations that share that geography. Um, 32 of our 35 people live in the Twin Cities. Um, we have three grant-making staff that live in North Dakota and South Dakota, um, really um, related to the work that they're doing. Um, because this team is uh, Twin Cities-based, um, we really want this position to be uh, based in the Twin Cities. And so that would be something that you would need to consider. If you live in um, the region, um, we'd want to um, you need to think about how the Twin Cities feel as a as a home for you. We would want the whole team to be here. Great. Um, and maybe for a last question, um, I think a lot of people want to know also just what it's like to be a part of the foundation in general, what the culture is like. And so maybe each one of us can say, you know, what we experience, what we see, um, uh, stuff like that. Um, if Joni, if you want to jump in with your answer. Sure. Thanks, Kim. So as I mentioned, I've been at the foundation for several months now, a few months. So, um, so far I found the culture to be very, it's very diverse um, and very welcoming uh, with a strong focus on kind of what Stephanie mentioned, uh, continuously learning. Um, I also found um, Bush culture to be very collaborative and friendly. Uh, any one person is always willing to help or answer questions. Um, and staff place a really high priority on building relationships with both each other and within uh, their communities, which is great to see. And I also feel like Bush continues to challenge us and their grantees to try something new, um, but doesn't make you feel too overwhelmed by it, which is a refreshing approach. Awesome. Uh, Stephanie, you wanna jump in? Yeah, it's great to hear what Johnny's experience is like. Um, I, I, I echo all of that. Um, I think that we, are a bunch of people who take the work and the responsibility of doing all we can for this region really seriously. Um, and that translates sometimes into having really big aspirations and we're always working with each other to try to say, okay, what can we do and how can we dream bigger and what can we get done? Um, and so that kind of, um, uh, I think a healthy tension is a real part of our work. Um, always a bigger list of ideas than we could ever possibly do and recognizing it's in service to um, people in the in the communities that we want to help. Um, but, and that can sound pretty serious, but I think we really also try to um, have a smile on our face and do some fun stuff while we're, while we're doing that. Um, we have a lot of snacks um, as well. Um, really part of Wednesdays, I kind of, if you were to track my eating, Wednesdays would be a peak because we have a lot of delicious food. Um, and, and also just, um, I think, try to, again, like hold the work really um, seriously and hold ourselves kind of lightly, like not to take ourselves too seriously. So I think that is also part of what I've appreciated about um, the Bush Foundation culture. Nice, thank you. Um, Joanna, you wanna jump in? I guess I would just ditto um, what Joni and Stephanie have said. And then just, um, I have really appreciated the thoughtfulness and flexibility of the foundation. And um, it's nice that we're in person, the Twin Cities based teams um, once a week. And, and um, because sometimes you can work in an area and not have any interaction with people in different areas. And, and one of the cool things that we have is a, a Teams chat for people who want to um, walk together over to the Skyway and um, get some lunch or get coffee, or sometimes people will go get um, popcorn or there's a great chocolate place. Um, and I like the fact that we're thoughtful too about the types of engagement that we do. Stephanie showed the picture from our staff retreat, which was we worked hard, but we played a lot of games. And so 
I didn't realize how hard we worked because we had so many fun games and ways to get to know each other uh, during the process. So I really appreciated that thoughtfulness and flexibility. Back to you, Kim. Thanks. Um, it's great hearing what everyone has to say. And I also agree with what everyone has to say. Um, so what I say might just be more of the same. But um, like I mentioned about Joanna, your team, I think everyone is also throughout the foundation is just really open to helping each other and, you know, being okay with if you don't know an answer and being there to help or being just really open about what we need help with. A lot of people are always telling me like, you can let us know if you have the capacity, if you don't have the capacity, if it's okay to say no, it's okay to, um, you know, be, be a person. I've heard that so much and I really appreciate it. Um, I think this group of people um, is full of people that are really hardworking and dedicated and incredible um, but also balance out their humanity and everyone else's humanity and really brings that into how we work together which is really really nice it's not just always you know head down in your work there's everyone and you know wants to treat each other respectfully and um, get to know want to get to know each other and everything so that's been really really nice to be a part of uh, I think it's fortunate to be able to do really great things and also feel like everyone you're with is are great humans um and I can go on <laughs> there's too many things to list but so it makes it hard to choose and figure out what I have to want to say but um yeah it's just a great place culture wise it's a lot of intentionality um and a lot of thoughtfulness and that is the that was the last question so uh, I really hope you all found this really useful um, and just want to say thanks for joining us and learning more about this opportunity and for being interested in it um, and in what we do